half a millennium, humanity has lived among the stars, in darkness. Humans reached the stars long ago, building a republic of high technology and universal emancipation. Then they fought over it, squandered it, and finally lost it. Now a new dark age has descended upon humanity, for the greatest of civilizations has fallen, leaving ignorance and fear scattered among the ruins of many worlds. Even stars are dying. Then from the ashes of our ruin, Vladimir halted our decline. Proclaimed emperor by popular decree, he united the known worlds of human space under his cunning and charismatic rule. Vladimir created the Great Charter, declaring how the powers of rulership would be divided and how his successors would be elected. Five scepters from Mother Church, protector of our souls. Five for the Merchant League, heralds of our past. Five for the noble houses, holders of our future. But each of these powers wished to rule it in their own way, and schemed to gain complete power at any price. Vladimir's military might convinced the noble houses to concede his rule, for they could not stand in battle before this master tactician. The Merchant League, last remnants of the Second Republic, made little pretense of their disdain for the Charter of Vladimir, but they accepted his rule nonetheless. Fearful of his popularity among the people, the Patriarch of the Universal Church accepted Vladimir's rule on the condition that the Church present him the crown, thus ensuring their ritual role in approving all his successors. Vladimir's coronation as the first emperor of the known worlds took place on Byzantium Secundus, which had been declared the imperial throne world. In the year 4550 AD, Vladimir crowned himself with his own hands and died. Vladimir's death, his great union fell apart. Noble House turned on Noble House, igniting a war for the spoils of Vladimir's empire. The Commonwealth of Humanity was shattered, overcome by iron-fisted feudal lords. As the suns fade, so dies humanity's hope.
Now audio is working. All right. OBS catch up with me now. Oops here. Yes, 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 yes. Took a little bit of convincing to get OBS to show this all right. So I apologize for a bit of delay on voice. I got to do one more thing and we'll be rocking it. There we go. Let's see, EFS, show back up. Perfect, perfect. All right, we got OBS going. I'll be checking chat. That's why my head will keep turning over to each side. It's not because I'm scoping the art on my walls. Just to see what you all are saying. All right. So, uh, the status of golems. Yeah, that's a fun one to look at in and of itself. So... We definitely want people to decide this for themselves. The capabilities for golems were incredible, but what was actually allowed was uh, another question. So I have played it in that uh, some of that development was throttled, but then you've got a lot of questions about are the greatest golems still around there and just hiding in the background. I will confess that uh, I loved a lot of what Asimov did with robots back in the day. And the, some of the best parts were how robots uh, who were developed to protect humanity had to hide themselves for fear of creating that Frankenstein effect and having people going after them. But by the same token, I mean, we're already looking at incredibly powerful AI now. So what would end up happening? Uh... To a great degree, having AI in lots of people's hands uh, negates the advantage people have from that AI. The stock market's the perfect example. All of these companies implemented all these trading algorithms, benefited, benefited, benefited from those algorithms for a blip until every other trading company caught up or surpassed it. So you had this arms race of stock market algorithms, and the same would be into AI. But uh, essentially, a lot of the use of AI would mean they were just negating each other. You would hope for a better life for all humans from it. But different groups keep competing for a little bit better and a little bit better. So uh, this is one of those things we love to leave to the individual GMs. I love the idea that uh, the golems got incredibly refined. But uh, for their own good sense, stayed hidden because humanity still had the ability to off-switch all of them. Or did humanity have that power and golems are still manipulating things from the, from the shadows? So the church certainly pushes the idea that golems became this horrible threat to humanity, uh, took everyone's jobs, uh, started turning humanity into a sinful mass, and getting rid of them was good for everybody. But up to you if you believe it. All right, glad the audio is working. But let's get into a game of EFS. I did want to talk about a lot of the uh, design decisions we did for this game. Now, remember, design for this game really began with our conversations back in 1994. Myself, Bill Bridges, Ken Leitner, Ed Pike. Ed was lead dude on this game, head dude on this game. So Ken and Ed were uh, several dudes, Holistic Gaming. Uh, Bill and I joined them, and we formed Holistic Design together with the idea of doing computer games and role-playing games and other type of games concurrently developing them because uh, we were big fans of the fact that each of these media could highlight different aspects of a, of a story, a setting, an idea. And this all came out of a discussion we had at the old computer game developers convention in uh, uh, San Jose as to what would religion look like thousands of years in the future. And no, Emperor of the Fading Suns is not that because we ended up coming with a much uh, different background that laid, led to a lot more adventure and cast spotlights on different aspects of humanity that we wanted to enjoy. But uh, we started working on it. We started working on the Fading Suns tabletop game at the same time. The goal originally was to have them out at the same time uh, because we had to change publishers on Emperor of the Fading Suns. It took a little longer um, Segasoft was not exactly an experienced strategy game publisher, so playtesting with them was problematic as be at best. Uh, we have a number of apologies in our 
uh, files from Sega Soft to do the various uh, inefficiencies they had in regard to the game. But let's go ahead and start a game as we play it. So I'll let everybody vote in chat. Let's go. Do you want to do historical or random? So we've always been a big fan of random and really in computers. Nothing is random. So uh, I'll let you all vote for a minute and we'll go. Whatever comes up the most is what we'll do. The historical map, we, we always love the idea of a historical map being set 2,000, uh, 3,000 years in the future, whatever, um, is the preset Fading Suns map. We've got Byzantium Secundus. You've got the various areas of power for the Hazad, House Hawkwood, House Dakados, House Al-Malik, uh, House Lee Halan. And uh, we set up that map specifically to give each house areas that it could exploit on its own before it really had to run in to battling the other houses but not so much time that they could just avoid each other all game long lots of reasons why they had to end up confronting one another random is randomly seated so you get some fun crazy sites there but you'll notice some things always the same the vow ships are always around their same worlds Leagheim and the Holy Terror have a ton of ships uh, ready to go for them. The symbiotes will come in at the same places. But, uh, yeah, you can have three or four houses right next to each other ready to fight and another one way off in the distance taking its time, which would seem an advantage for that other house unless one house can quickly make a couple others capitulate and suddenly have a ton of vote scepters and a lot of extra cities to develop. All right, it looks like Historical is winning overwhelmingly. Jason Sartman, Nikolai... Scotch and uh, Cicero. Cicero's in the chat. Awesome. We will go historical. I got to admit, it's actually been a while since I played the historical one because I always play random. All right. So, um, who will we be? It's been a little bit since I've played Lee Halan. I've, uh, I've done this most recently with Hawkwood. I usually play Hazat. Lee Halan kind of has a, um, a cheap, tiny little advantage in going first in that you get to sell your Byzantium Secundus map to the Val before anyone else. It makes some money. So that's one of my fun little cheats. If you sell too much to the Val, so too many maps to the Val, trouble does accrue. But if you just sell a couple maps to here and there, you're only undermining humanity a little bit. Just a little bit of undermining humanity. That can't be too bad, can it? All right. You're right. Uh, Jason notes, if uh, he recalls, Having random allows symbiote worlds to have more than one path to the rest of the galaxy. That's right. You don't have the same choke point you had before. Choke points was a big part of this game. It, uh, you could choke off the symbiote hordes from coming on in if you so desired. Random does make symbiotes appear in some weird places. I have to agree. All right, so pick me a house. Let's uh, go ahead and take one minute to pick a house, and let's see who we're going to be today. Um, now officially each of these houses has essentially the same number of points i will say that some of the houses have advantage and, dis and disadvantages anyway um for the house Dakados, we gave them a fair amount of naval power uh that we didn't give anyone else really and that was hard for them to use on other planets but it, it was useful on the planets directly around them um i believe some of the houses had less of some resources than the others on their home planet but we always made up for it in the planets directly around them so if you went uh planet mining pretty quickly you could get some cool stuff and uh load up all right voting we got one vote for all malik a second vote for all malik okay always fun uh nikolai uh says are we voting again all malik jason says all malik is my favorite when i ran the actual tabletop game so i vote for them all right house all malik we're going to secretly make that uh, Second Republic come true. Not that I'm saying that's the goal of House All Malik. I'm just saying. All right. So this I think we should have done better. We've got play and we've got next. And a lot of people just hit play and get going and don't realize all the other things they immediately selected. So let's go ahead and select some things. Because, I mean, you've immediately set your difficulty, what's going on in the game, etc. So let's hit next. Um, while I'm talking through these... Let me know if you want me to show tutorials. If I'm playing this game for real, I turn tutorials off. But if any of you are new to this game, it can be good to show tutorials and you'll learn more about the game's rules as we play. We had a very elaborate tutorial system uh, set up in here. I actually am not sure that it was enough 
but uh, it could be kind of overwhelming at the same time. So I'm glad we set it up the way we did. I'm glad you can turn it off. All right, Third Republic. Thank you, Jason. Hey, it's 8 p.m. here, so uh, let's have some more wake-up juice. All right. Yes, the First Republic is uh, getting ready to come into existence now. The Second Republic is far away in the future. And that Third Republic is but a glimmer in an all Malik eye. Or is it a Revi? Somebody's. Maybe it was a Mercurian. Who knows? All right. We are not going to go beginner. We shall go ahead and... You all want to go ridiculous? We'll go ridiculous. Uh, Rebellion will be on. Plague will be on. I love Plague in this game. Man, can that mess you up. <laughs> or, it's so funny... I always love it when I invade um, an AI homeworld and suddenly I realize I'm infected with the plague and I realize everything on the planet is infected. It's like, oh man, there's a whole storyline going on there that uh, you haven't been a part of. Definitely show the combat reports. Uh, PBM, we're not doing PBM. We will definitely be consuming food. Universal Warehouse certainly makes it easier, so we'll go with that. It, it, it's a lot of fun to play this with Universal Warehouse Offer. You've got to carry your food and supplies from planet to planet. But uh, that definitely prolongs the game. So I love Universal Warehouse for multiplayer games. That can be a lot of fun. Uh, no real votes on show tutorials. So we will go ahead and uh, turn off the tutorial system. I will assume that all of you are EFS experts and you're all going to be laughing at how I mess up the game. Uh, are you all... Oops, I don't have the desktop audio on. You're not hearing the cool music. Oh, my goodness. All right, sorry. We're going to jump around one more time so you can hear the cool music. All right. Let's make sure you all are hearing the cool music. Let's hear it. There we go. I love the music that I put together for EFS. I think it's great stuff. I'm guessing you all can hear it now. Yep. Plaguing a target when you invade. What a way to secure a victory even when you lose. Capturing one of those plague bombs uh, from a ruin was tough. So much easier to have your own plagues to inflict on your friends. I mean, your enemies. All right. So, looks like we are in good place. Oh, I, I like how... Um, this was kind of Ken's idea on how to implement the security for PBM. Where you could have your own code so folks couldn't hack your own game. Uh, neat setup, but... As always, play with folks you don't really have to worry about that with. But then we got a five-player game here, so let's hope you have uh, four friends that you can trust to get a full five-player game going on. Did the plague artillery actually uh, induce the plague in earlier versions? It didn't do the whole worldwide plague. No, it was just a great way to mess up your opponents pretty, pretty violently. And I think... Erg, I'll have to look this up. I think... Uh, you know how planet bombardment can destroy cities? I think it could do damage to cities as well. But I'd have to look that up. I know that was something we broke down at one point. And that question was from Nikolai. All right. So now we have ourselves the all at Ridiculous Difficulty ready to go. Wait, no, we're not difficult. We got to go ahead and choose our... Wait, I thought I could choose some power. Oh, that's coming. That's right. All right. Like that picture of Usara. All of them are pretty cool. Uh... We'll go ahead and jump in as uh, Usara. Uh, and let's go ahead and take that name. I'll be the Empress. And in we go. All right, no traits whatsoever. Let's be um, a little bit true uh, to the house. And this can be kind of damaging. I'm going to go ahead and take a friend in the league and an enemy in the church. So, uh, this can put me at risk for the Inquisitors coming after my stuff if I start researching that prescribed technology and makes it less likely they're going to vote for me to be Emperor. But, let's hope that we get some good votes from the League to take its place. That enemy in the church, I think we left it a little over, a little outweighted against friend in the League, but not, not hard. So, we'll go ahead and have fun with that. Now, there are a couple of these I think are pretty powerful in the game. Uh, comparatively uh, speaking, that charismatic leadership could be a really cool way if you grab a palace early. Uh, obviously, warrior ethic coming out with experience is a big plus. The uh, Battlemaster, <laughs> this is one of our favorite ones. 
because that could give your troops kind of a lot of power, but that noble then would die fairly quickly if you didn't surround it with other infantry. So it was always dangerous to take that battle master trait. It could really help you conquer especially your own planet, but you needed to have a bunch of infantry running around your noble. Lots of bodyguards. All right, let's start researching right off the bat. Lot. Every one of these has a good strategy. Certainly if you want to get nasty, go microbiology fast. If you want to go the conventional weapons, crank up that physics. I will admit, uh, I like to do this differently for different houses. If I'm going Hazat or Hawkwood, I'll generally crank the physics. If I'm going Dakados, you better believe it's either psychosocial or microbiology. Uh, Lee Halan, psychosocial. And I'll go all Malik psychosocial this time. It's a fun tree. You, you need that physics pretty quickly to start building spaceships you need. But that psychosocial can give you some really cool foot units who uh, can make a big difference early, especially in multiplayer games. So let's research psychosocial. All right, here we are, good old Istakar. Wait, did I hit random? No, no, okay, good deal, good deal. Good deal, we are correct here. All right, so we got Aragon where the uh, Hazat are building their forces, Delphi for the Hawkwood, Severus for the Dakados, and Lilo Kish, Kish over here. Kiss on the Kish. Now a few little tricks we used to do for single player games. You wouldn't do these multiplayer. Um, so let's check out our home world. Got lots of good little troops here on your home world. The idea always was you want to start taking over the resources for your home planet. It's a forex game. Uh, explore. Uh, ex, uh, explore, explan expand, expand, uh, explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. And it definitely followed that pattern. First, you got to find where all the good stuff on your world and other worlds are. You have to expand your influence over the resource points. You have to exploit those resources to create the troops you need. And then you need to go ahead and take out the enemies. And in this game, of course, you don't really have to kill everybody. You can if you want to. You just have to do enough to get yourself the votes you need to be emperor. That can be kind of tricky. So, for a lot of players, you've got the, the urge to Zerg rush. And of course, this is pretty Zerg rush where you could load all your troops up on one of these things and go flying to the nearest uh, other house for the uh, Alm Leak, you're two jumps away from Kish. Land while you're still at peace and go attack their palace right off the bat. In multiplayer, that was an incredibly dangerous strategy because while they might have emptied out their palace to go conquer other things, if you messed it up, you had nothing left and they were coming back after you pretty quickly as well because you didn't spend as much time developing your own resources. So I'm a big fan of going ahead and developing, uh, conquering the things on your own planet, but getting ready, getting maybe one other planet under your control, and then starting to exploit, uh, to take over, attack your, your nearby other houses, like uh, Al Malik versus either the, uh, either uh, the Lee Halan, uh, yeah, I guess we're, three jumps from Delphi. Why was I thinking we were two jumps from Delphi? I guess probably because I always went and grabbed Criticorum early. Yep. Yeah, three, uh, four jumps. Wow. Yep, I guess Lee Halan will be our first one we pick on this game. Is the number of starting starships accurate lore-wise? All right. So what is a number in each of these? Is this one ship? Is it multiple ships? I consider these small groups of these ships. If you send out your cruiser flying into another planet, it's really not an escort. It's got some smaller ships around it to support it. And those are fleets of bulk carriers, bulk callers. Those are fleets of, um, of, uh, of frigates flying around. Small fleets, small, as we do in the Noble Armada game, you'll have like groups of one to four ships, something like that. 
However, we never define it because we want you to picture that as you want to do it in your own mind. You picture these as massive fleets. We kind of base this in many ways on the Hundred Years' War. Uh, for those of you who love that with Creasy and um, all the great uh, knights versus archers battles and so forth, the biggest fights, the, 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 those we really know of in history, often had 10 to 20,000 troops total, not per side, total. I think like the biggest battles of the Hundred Year War, maybe 50,000 warriors total. And that's what we sought to, to feel, to create in this game. Most, during the Hundred Years War, most of the parts of Europe involved in the fighting weren't necessarily being trampled every day by knights on their horses. But when the battles were there, they were that area was really messed up, and the prolonged nature of the war just drained resources from everyone and caused massive har hardships throughout Europe, even though it was only a few thousand people fighting at a time. So that was the idea here. The nobles are giving up their, their feudal allotment of troops to the uh, prince. The prince is going off to wage war, expand the houses, power and prestige and maybe take over these enemy worlds and make everyone else richer. And we definitely try and apply that in the beginning. So in the beginning of this game, you are trying to retake what is historically your house's home world. So that means Al Malik are fighting other Al Malik. In this case, it's because uh, Isara believes that she's going to be Empress one day and wants to get everyone else to do her bidding and give her the troops safe promise. So she's running around taking these rebel cities. That's why they're called rebels. In your eyes, these are rebels, even though in their eyes, they are doing uh, what is correct for them um, in a feudal sense. So this isn't just the way that we internally define it. You don't just have six ships. This is a, probably a 20 ship uh, fleet that you put together. And as you get more ships, you'll build up. I'm a big fan of adding a whole bunch of other ships to this fleet, especially when you get Stigmata or the naval garrison on your side. So yeah, I don't see that as six ships, but you can, you can imagine it that way. Really see the universe as having a scarcity of advanced technology and strong resources. I mean, this is a universe uh, that has essentially been in a on again, off again, state of war, and is now back to a real state of war, and us some serious backsliding of technology. So yeah, the way I view it, this is kind of like about 20 ships, and uh, you're gonna go have fun trying to bring these rebels to realize the rightness of our uh, of our cause. So we have got troops around here. We know where the uh, cities are we just don't know what they're doing right now what they're creating at this point in time what their focus is and these are cities it's not just you've got a mining encampment this uh, would have been birmingham in london of old pulling the coal out of the uh, out of the grounds of course this is the imperial eye fort do not attack it danger danger you don't know what's in it right now you do know what's in the agora there's that merchant league people we're friends with the merchant league so we're not going to attack it right now and take all their goods Big mistake if you attack the League. How many of you like attacking the League and getting wiped out in the first turn? Anyway. Yeah, the League will respond quickly. All right, we've got a lot of tanks. So, what do we know that we have up here in space? We have these two assault landers, which can land anywhere. We've got this bulk hauler, which really doesn't have that ability. We also have a, a, a freighter over on Byzantium Secundus we're going to get to in a minute. So, these... Assault landers let us do some really quick attacks uh, to grab stuff uh, in weird places on your home planet. So, for instance, we know we've got a city way up here in the corner that can take us forever to get to by feet, but we can assault land onto it. Same with here. Here there are three connected uh, by roads. So you can run right through there and grab those three cities really quickly. We hope. Uh, and of course, we've got the ones that are approachable by foot over here. I like to, right off the bat, use the assault landers to get the ones, oh, where does this road go? Must be something there that we don't know about. That exploration phase is important for us. 
Again, 4X game, we really wanted to get you exploring earlier. I love Fog of War. How do you define Fog of War on a planet that's been inhabited for thousands of years where people should know everything? Well, you don't know what's going on there right now. You don't know what kind of weirdness is going on. Uh, the Sarah Branch of the Al Malik family has only been ruling here. Al Malik are on other planets as well. It's just they are not really communicating that well. Uh, or <laughs> that friendly with each other. So first we have to bring our own house under control. So, one thing, uh, I'm not sure that we did the best in this game was the um, balance of artillery versus everything else. We had a game called Battles of Destiny where we really took the idea that artillery was what mattered. And you would have everything else kind of as art artillery protection. Not as bad in this game, but uh, I still think artillery might have been overpowered. But... Uh, the co-workers were big fans of World War I and World War II history, and yeah, artillery was in Korean War. Artillery was the thing, so made a lot of sense. Plus, it's, it's still kind of fun to have those big guns just shooting around. All right. So, anyway, what I like to do is send my assault landers after something distant. In this case, we're going to go after here, and then we send some foot troops after the things that are closest to us. All the resources at the bottom. We had lots of food at the beginning. And not enough of anything else. So we'll have to make amends to that quickly. Thankfully, as uh, Al Malik... Al Malik started a little more balanced in some of the houses. Good food and good metal coming in right off the bat. And quick to increase that. Others are a little more weighted different ways at the beginning. I think some get jewels right off the bat. Uh, Al Malik, I think we do better getting our jewels off planet. I'll have to think about that. I remember if that's exactly true. It's been a long time since I played Al Malik. But anyway... Let's find ourselves uh, some of that. Um, yep, infantry. Uh, I'm sorry, anti-tank gun and artillery. That's a good combo. We have one up here in the farm, which could go marching up there, but we're going to land one of the assault landers right here to pick that up. So, select land. Jump right in there. Let's grab ourselves anti-tank gun, artillery. <laughs> Here you see how much food and everything you're producing. More loyalty, by the way, really impacts your production. The more loyal people are, the less they're skimming off the top of their feudal dues. So that's why that uh, I pointed out that loyalty uh, boost in the um, at the, at the uh, characteristic screen that can have a significant impact on the game. I really like that one as a way to really crank out some extra production. That can be really valuable in a multiplayer game. All right, anyway. So, shoot that one up into space. Leave it there. Still got one movement left. Let's go ahead and select this one. Whoops, I forgot where I was going to land that one. Again, I don't remember the Alm leak too well. Is it in the lab? No, where was the... Uh, I guess it was in the fort. Yes, we're going to go ahead and jump into the fort. All right, so down into the fort. Not you. You! Land on my fort! Yeah, picked the wrong place. And in my fort. All right. Anti-tank gun. Fill that direct power. And the artillery will be hiding behind it. Let's blast them off into air. So now we've got these two vessels. We'll go ahead and land. All right. So one thing we would do when we create these... Uh, networks of cities is one of the cities would kind of be a trap with lots of extra troops. I, I have no idea which one it is in the Al Malik. I will go ahead and land here. One of the playing secrets that I like is always land So if I'm going to take a city so I can immediately travel down a road if possible go to somewhere that doesn't require a lot of movement. That way if I make enemy units retreat I can capture them more quickly and save myself some production. Oh, thank you about uh, Jason for the nice comment about the 3D models of you. Can you believe it that this game actually had some... I won't say the best 3D models of the time, but uh, some impressive 3D work for its time. That intro video that I showed at the start, when uh, Segasoft first played that to distributors... Remember, we didn't have the uh, YouTube to put up trailers. We actually took it to events and showed them off. They got a standing ovation for that one. Um... Yeah, we had a lot of fun with the 3D, and of course, then we did a lot more 3D work on our uh, Games Workshop title, um, uh, and uh, 
we'd hoped to do a whole lot more 3D work with Noble Armada. Unfortunately, that didn't come together. But this was the game we first started working on our 3D chops. Oh, Mall Tycoon actually was the main uh, beneficiary of that 3D work. That was the first 3D Tycoon game. And while it had a lot of the problems that a first of its type will ever have, the 3D aspect was uh, had a lot of neat features to it. But anyway, we are landing here. Yay! And now... We are going to bombard that city. Now that we've seen it, nobody's hidden, so it'll be easier to hit them and kill them. Going after a little old farm. Eh, that'll be an easy conquest. Yeah, look at that. Hit kill. One hit kill. Let's do that again. Make this a real easy victory. Alright, easy enough. We're going to save one of our... Uh, one of our attacks here from the cruiser. Direct and range. Nice, powerful stuff. Not a dreadnought, but still a nice ship for uh, whatever that um, city in the middle of these three road-connected uh, cities is. Right, so. Let's go back up here. Unload everybody. Exit. All right, this should be an easy... I'm actually going to assault them. Um... Let me I'm trying to remember which is the best way to make someone retreat. I'm going to try the assault. So you've got normal, no bonuses, assault, attack plus, defense minus. We've got so much more assault power than they do that uh, we're going to pretty much take care of them with the artillery. Just a little bit of follow-up from those anti-tank guns. And faint, of course, is uh, when you don't want to lose that noble who's in your stack. So let's do an assault. All right, yeah, we took no damage. Everybody's full in the green, but we also didn't make anyone retreat. So we probably should have done a normal. Let's try and grab some of their troops. All right, so combat done. I'm actually not going to move these troops because I'm going to put them in the uh, assault lander again next turn and get going with them. On the farm, I will start building an artillery. Yes, yes, yes. And we're going to go back into space, and we are going to land our bulk hauler right here on top of our fort and we're gonna load it with some of these uh, faster vehicles we've got three tanks and two self-propelled artillery two wolf three wolfins and two smiters so uh, let's put those smiter a wolfin another wolfin and another smiter we got two self-propelled artillery two tanks so now we've got a fast assault team going Shoot them up into space, land them on that farm we just took. And now this might be a mistake, but we'll try it. We're going to find out. If this is like a fort in the middle with a ton of rebel units, we could be in trouble. But we'll give it a try. So unload all. Group these uh, four armored units. So again, the question is, how many tanks are these? Is it a single tank? Is it a giant army? Uh, what are we looking at? Uh, I like to think of it as platoon or company level, depending on what scale you want to enjoy in this game. And again, it's, well, it's got self-propelled artillery. It has all the other troops around it that would be involved with it. Uh, same with the, uh, the wolf and what an armored unit would have with it. Some ex extra equipment besides just the attack vehicles. All right. So let's get moving. Let's see what we find. Yay! For Justice and the Third Republic. Oh, yeah. Getting some gems on the next one. So let's hope this is a mine. It is a mine. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we got a noble in there. Now, I'm not sure if we planted the noble in these when we first defined them or if there's a random chance of having nobles on your world. Boy, when you can capture the noble, what a big advantage. All right, so I'm going to bombard this from space. Yeah, having six nobles, especially in a multiplayer game, when you're noble hunting the other player, and you've killed five of the nobles, and they're still in the game! So, oh no, where's that other noble? And you might never find them going from planet to planet. In multiplayer games, yes, I'm one of those people who often hides a noble in some way out-of-the-way place where they'll never be found, just so I'll never be out of the game. But, uh... Anyway, all right, so let's bombard this from space. Yeah, thankfully that was a mine. If we had jewels there, nothing to mine with, I'd been happy. Jewels get kind of scarce in this game. All right, so. 
Attack the mine! That's my mine! Oh boy, that did a lot, a whole lot of nothing. Alright, so what do you have in here? <laughs> Two anti-air! So that's not really a force that's gonna put me at risk. But that's also not a force I can take out with just four armored units. So, I had said I wanted to leave my troops up here. But yeah, I'm gonna have to move these down and maybe even bring in some reinforcements. So... Oh, let's start trudging them on down. Maybe I'll put them back on my spaceship after we take the mine. And in fact... I might back up my artillery, my uh, armored units to join them just to make sure that if there's some freaky little force over here it doesn't suddenly cause me more damage than I want. So let's drop back and have one big force. One big happy force. Now that's a nice good mixed uh, arms unit. The, the idea in this game was to focus on mixed arms tactics and certainly multiplayer games when you've got lots of cool technology at your disposal that is really the case. You can't over focus on artillery or anything else. I mean, we've got lots of air units that'll tear up artillery in a heartbeat if you leave them unprotected. You'll see right now, I don't have any anti-air units in here. That's because we don't really give the AI a whole lot of air capability unless you start attacking ruins. But the other houses will definitely get some. Oh yeah, thanks Jason. Jason uh, notes that one of the better themes from the soundtrack is playing now. That and the main theme are the best. Yeah, I'd love to hear everyone else's votes on which uh, songs you like. It, this is still music. I like to play just when I'm working. Uh, Nikolai notes the game uh, is his, in historical is seated. Randomness, I believe, is AI production and ruins. The ruins are definitely all random. We talked about that with the nobles, so maybe the nobles are always in that location. It makes sense since we had gems there that we would have done it that way. But I didn't remember having an extra noble on all the home ruins. I thought we... I thought there was some random chance you could find them on places, other than in the ruins. The ruins definitely had a chance of random nobles. Alright, anyway. So, this group is done. Now we've got all these other troops. We can start going off by foot to see what's up here. We know that in... Well, I don't know. We've got the ridiculous level of difficulty. We're not going to be seeing enemy troops landing on our planet, really, in the first ten turns. So you can kind of strip your cities down and send the troops out to other places to expand your power. Um, so uh, we've got a bunch of foot troops over there. We knew we had another piece of armor here. Uh, it would be nice to use foot troops to grab these two cities, so why don't we start going that direction. Yeah, we see a fertile location here, a lot of fishy over there, so that must be a farm over there. Not a bad idea to grab a farming. Hey, a fertile location over here. Not even being farmed yet. I gotta get a farmer down there. Farmer here. Yep, put a farmer here. Get lots of good stuff. Alright. So, uh... I am going to leave one militia there. A city doesn't really have a spotting range of its own. You want to at least keep one troop in there so if something pops up, you know about it. So let's fortify that uh, unit in there. We'll do the same here. These four troops, do we want to send them the same way or do we want to start? Because we know, all right, spoiler, there's a ruin here. When a road leads to nowhere, you know there's a ruin there. So we might start hoofing these troops on over so that by the time they get there, some real power units might be with them as well. Ask a modding related question. Like how things in the game are dependent on game files, executables. Go ahead and ask away. Um, if you're asking about the randomness question we were talking about, Nikolai, that would, uh, yeah. That would come to the XQ. But we did try and put everything else in, like, CFG files and, like, so you could modify almost, pretty much everything in the game. The, the troop types, troop strengths. Uh, there are modders who put their own art in the game, I'm very glad to see. Um... Yeah, the idea really was to make this as moddable as possible. The trouble is it's... And this is a 1996 game. It still wasn't the easiest to do. The Noble Armada game we recently released has lots of modding tools in it that are easy to use. My favorite part of the game is often just coming up with new missions for it. On the other hand, uh, you can mod pretty much everything in here, but it does take a little bit of, of skill. Jason asks, if we're talking about mods, I'd really like to know if Andrew's ever played this with mods, and if so, which mods are his favorite? Yeah, Nova. 
Um, but then again, it's been a while since I jumped in all the mods. I, that's really something I need to re... I, since I put the GOG version on my machine, the good old games version on my machine, I haven't added the mods on it like I should. Nova I used to love. Nova was... I, there was a period when I was definitely playing more of Nova than of our version. Yeah, I really need to reinstall the mods, because there is so much fun in those versions of this game. It has been a while since I've dug into it like I should. All right, we're going to send these foot troops heading on towards this. We know it's a ruin. We know there's something there, so we're going to go find out what it is. So let's start heading over there. Sentry those. We're not worrying about them. Send, uh, well, let's see. Should I send these faster troops? Yeah, let's send these faster troops up there. Uh, and send the slower troops after the ruin. I'm overthinking this. We're in the start of the game. I mean, I'm not going to die no matter what I do here unless I unleash a plague bomb up here. And really, those are like alien ruins, which are harder to get to. Jason says, I really like the rebalancing units aspect of the Nova mods. Nikolai says, I've always been curious about what unitrules.gat does. It's one with all the unit indexes with air, water, space, land, bear, and all binary and default owner columns. I don't remember the default owner columns, but uh, yeah, the airspace, land, bear, and all those, uh, where they can fight. Where can that unit be? You can make units can go everywhere if you want to. And how much movement? I thought that was movement. I guess it's just where they could be. Another good theme from the soundtrack here. Absolutely agree. Absolutely. All right. Oh boy, if the Inquisitors come after my lab, there's only going to be one militia there to defend it. Let's hope we don't get Inquisitors anytime soon. Hey, where should I take my engineer? Well, we know we've got food right here, so that's probably a good place right off the bat. It would be kind of nice to build that road and move those units more quickly. Um, probably going to have some mines right up there. And we're going to need mines pretty quickly. So why don't we do this twofold? Let's go build this road as quickly as we can. And then we'll zip to this side and get ready to start mining it. You need metal early in this game. You always have a shortage of metal at the beginning of the game. Unless you go ahead and buy it all up from the... Uh, uh, from the Merchant League. Alright, here's something you never do in a multiplayer game. Stripping the units from my palace. So if that enemy rush comes, that will mess you up. One of the things a lot of players like to do is immediately build all around their palace to make sure that uh, enemies at least have to get their way through that city before getting there. Uh, you just then have to defend these enough because it often isn't that hard to get right on through. Alright, with our shield, let's take out these folk, get going, let's sentry the rest. These are anti-spaceship guns, so you always want to leave them here around your palace. This one moving with the others, we're going to have a whole lot of militia getting chewed up in a little bit. Yeah, militia, <laughs> to be honest, militia is just there as a spotter. And to soak up damage when your nobles in there. They're pretty useless in combat. Arborium! Let's go ahead and... That one's sentried. The other's moving now. Maybe that's where I should have built the road. Oh well. We'll get them going. There's nothing over there to mess with me. Alright, now we're on Byzantium Secundus. Here's... One of, oh, you got to keep a noble on Byzantium Secundus so you can vote in the elections. No combat can happen in and around Byzantium Secundus. So what that means is right off the bat, ah, they're not in a good position to explore. Oh, well, we'll still explore just because exploring is what we do. Oh, yeah, look at those Imperial units. Don't you wish you had those troops? <laughs> All right. But here we've got the freighter, so we need to put stuff on that freighter to get moving. I love my power legions early in the game. 
good units. So let's shoot them off. Hey, everyone else is doing the same thing. Uh, let's get going to Istakar. Not less more jumps than I thought. Maybe we want to get Alon next. All right, let's go ahead and sentry the rest of these. All right, so we got a couple frigates here. Um, I still like to explore, so let's go jumping around a little bit. It's just fun to see what you encounter. All right, you've moved all your units. We are not officially done. Uh, Jason says, speaking of the city surround trick, I remember thwarting the position by surrounding my labs with cities, and they won't attack those cities. It seems the Inquisitor units won't attack another city get to a lab. Yeah, 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 that's a great cheat. But I remember one time I got hoisted on that one in that I had attacked another house. It must have been in a single-player game. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'd done that to my labs, but I'd conquered a lab on the other planet, and the Inquisitors landed there and burned that lab. So I thought I was slick, and they got around it. All right, uh, we're not ending our turn yet because we still have things to do. First of all, on Istakar. Uh, let's go ahead and build something. Let's get another self-propelled artillery going here. Get some fast units going. That's mainly for our attack on the next planet, probably Elon we're going to. And uh, let's get another engineer building. I think that other engineer will be the one to go to this, build that farm. So we'll build it in the lab. Or her. Just go see... Yeah, I know. We're very 1990s. Most of the art is definitely males. So, definitely something I would change in it. I love the artwork, but uh, we definitely have a much more interesting mix. And it's not even, I mean, rep being representative is great, and attracting other players is great, but it's a lot more interesting, too, to have a more diverse mix of character portraits. We're very happy with the nobles we had. Just wish we'd done that with uh, the unit art as well. Hey, hey, Sam! Thanks for joining us. Let's go! My favorite game! Any questions and comments? Much appreciated. All right, so we've got some stuff building. Last little bit of uh, nastiness I promised you we'd do. We are going to trade with the Vow! Yes, what map do you want? So they only want maps that you really have stuff of. We don't want to give them our home planet. So we will give them Byzantium Secundus. 910 Firebirds! That's a good bit of extra money at the start of the game, so yes! We will definitely take 910 Firebirds to sell off humanity to the Vow. Um, I know some players like to start negotiating with the other houses this early in the game. I think that kind of delayed things. I would tend to do that a little more clo a little closer to the, uh, to the Regent, uh, or yeah, to the Regency elections. So... Let's go ahead and go with it. Look, we got money. 5,410 Firebirds to waste. I'm almost tempted to go shopping at the Agora and get myself some extra metal and build another engineer right off the bat. Maybe we'll do that next turn. We uh, have grabbed another city over there. All right. End turn. Yeah. Uh, play by email. This was when you could just redo your turn over and over again. We had some counters against that as well. Things you did in the same order would usually get the same random result. In other words, the same uh, number generator would peg if you did things the same order. Would you just change the order that you did things and have different results? Have you ever played Reality Emperor Wars? Whose was that? The question was from Nikola. I I'm, don't remember Reality Emperor Wars off the top of my back. Give me some more um, info. And while we had information, we're going to meditate. Meditation time. Very omelette thing to do, though. So is alien psychology, to be honest. All right, researching meditation. Got our artillery there. Um, let's build none for now, because we might build uh, an engineer there. Hey, 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 he did send his units out after me. I am glad I retreated. I was smarts for once. Oop, yeah, let's build nothing right now. 
Neurocellular surgery? What? I can't play with human DNA? <sighs> you not let me have any fun. All right, actually, I should probably have diplomacy with Kish, or else he might destroy my frigate when I land there. So, right now, let's say, hi, Celestra. Give me... Oh, we are at peace. Let's just try and be nice. Give me a ministry if you're elected, always the Imperial Fleet. And I'll give you a planet map. The Santium Secundus, which you know everything that I know. Like, oh, yeah, you don't have any, I don't have any technology you want. And I'll appreciate it. It doesn't really do anything. I don't, nothing's going to change. No feelings will change. But maybe at least this way they won't kill me. Won't really impact whether or not they'll kill my frigate when my frigate hits their uh, system. Maybe I should have gone for peace treaty. Because eventually I'm going to kill them anyway. Oh, well. Let's go with this. All right, Frigate Kish. A lot of fun naming these uh, planets. Demole! Let's see what that... Uh, so, all right, let's see here. Hey, hey, Rebels coming at me. We got Rebels moving everywhere. Well, and Rebels are actually kind of tough. Yeah, 320 air... I forgot Rebels had good anti-air capability. 330 direct and 630 close. Let's compare them to my loyal militia. Where it's 440 close. Not nearly as accurate, not nearly as strong. Oh, that's my infantry. That's not even the militia. Yeah, the militia is useless. Wow, the Rebels are better than my infantry. Maybe I want some reinforcements before I do that attack. Uh, let's see. Nikolai talking about the Reality Emperor Wars. Uh, mod, uh, Verda, uh, Nux was his name. It was a mod that added lore-specific units and set the start of the historical setup according to law from the books. Reality Creator, a different name. Dame Olay was hard, full of hardcore rebels. If I remember, that's because you're going after the brother battle troops. Yes, Dame Olay was supposed to be a really interesting world if you wanted to go after that. So it's really funny. We put a lot of these things in here thinking, and it turned out to be true, that players will replay it just to try different strategies, go to different worlds, and you could get embroiled on Dame Olay for a while, because you're fighting the Brother Battle Lord. So, yeah. And that could be a lot of fun in itself. I mean, one of the great ways to play this game is just your own victory conditions. I'm going to wipe out the Brother Battle Order. That's my goal. I'm going to wipe out the Church. That's my goal. I'm going to wipe out the League. That's my goal. And those are some seriously hard fights. Okay. So, let's go up here and see what this force is. Okay, that's a nothing force. We're going to go ahead and uh, wipe them out with this group right now. Let's just go ahead and assault straight south. Should wipe them out quickly. It had no armor, I mean, no artillery, so I should... Hey, hey, we're going to capture an infantry. All right, so let's move down. Get on down, get on down. Oh no! Oh, I messed up! I just went down with everybody. Now my, all my artillery and tank guns wasted their move capturing this infantry. I should've just seen as that one unit. They can't attack the mine. Err! Right, let's see what's in the mine. Ah, that is annoying. All right, let's bombard it from space. Oh, I messed up that one. All right. Well, we took out an anti-air unit. Wonderful. I'm sorry. Yeah, now we're going to take out another anti-air unit and leave their artillery there. Want that artillery dead? Oh, well. All right. Well, this is going to be interesting. Now, well, let's keep that freighter moving on towards this Dakar. Whee! Fly, little freighter. Now we might have gotten 912 for how much we've uh, explored at this point. Not going after you yet. Let's get this uh, engineer moving. Build that road. Reinforce. 
All right. Still prefer to have a uh, artillery in this unit. I don't. So we're actually going to faint. We've got enough power to take out the rebel. I'd rather minimize, minimize, minimize my casualties. So quick feet, faint. Oh man, he took out my armor. That was not a good exchange on my part. That took out some resources I'd rather he had not taken out. Let's go ahead and move my uh, engineer up here. Like we said, going to go mine with the engineer. Now let's wait on that. Wow, we're already at 9 p.m. This game is too fun. <laughs> that is the problem with this game. It's not a problem. It's the way we designed it. I, it is still a game I quickly lose myself in. I want to just keep going for hours. I might... Um, stream for like about another half hour keep answering questions and what do you all think uh is it a game i should save and maybe start doing on a more regular basis come back to this and stream it more often go ahead and post in chat let me know or if you'd like me to go ahead and advance the game and start talking about later game design uh, we can figure it out uh based on what you all are enjoying and we'll see about getting more of the modders in here. There is a good modder community. If any of the mod uh, folks from the mod Discord are in here and want to recruit other people for that Discord channel, feel free. I mean, really, we designed this game, uh, yes, with our own thoughts on what a game should be like in mind, but really let modders get a hold of it and change anything in it. Two, three, four. Artillery reinforcement coming to the mine. Let's grab these guys. This is a good question, because now I'm in a weird position. I really want to get that noble. Uh, I can't, because if I, it takes one movement to hit the mine, and then I'm not going to have enough movement left to capture the noble who's going to move down to that, uh, to that hill. I don't, oh, what's my movement for? armor and hills. I think it's four. So I got a way to turn. Oh! I messed myself up in a lot of ways by sending everyone after that infantry unit. Blast and double blast. Maybe I should just wipe out the noble. But the opportunity to capture a noble is always so good. Well, let's skip these guys and come back and see what we start. We've got so much shipping here not doing anything. What a waste! Alright, we got some metal being created. Uh, maybe I should land, pick... Who's my furthest back? Those are my furthest back. I'm going to get my assault lander to come down, pick these folks up, and drop them off here and see... Start looking at that ruin. Yep, that's a good idea. Alright, Jason says, I wouldn't mind if this became a series of some sort. Yeah, we can do that. That will keep me only playing it for an hour or so at a time instead of... Hey, it's 6 a.m. Which, uh... Is an easy thing to have happen with this game. Just one more turn! Alright, let's get my assault... Oh, my assault landers are on the planet, aren't they? Let's go get these assault landers. Up! Down. Turn around. Pick a bale of... Militia. Useless, useless militia. Hey, they soak damage. Okay. This is my fun ominous music is playing right now. Really feel like there's going to be a Phantom of the Opera coming at you in a minute. Leave that freighter there for now. Let's put it in space. Doing me any good. No, let's get another engineer building. Mole! Alright, I know there's got to be a bunch of mines over here, so uh, let's start building an engineer. to 80 metal. We need more heavy metal. 
Jason notes, hey, I never said it'd be a short series. Yeah, we're only a few turns into it after an hour already. So <laughs> this could go on for a while. But hey, I'm always happy to discuss game design, especially strategy games. All right. Let's go ahead and end the turn. A lot of folks like to use uh, their early engineer. We give every house an engineer. A lot of folks like to use that engineer to build another lab. And uh, that can be a really powerful upgrade. That's a nice strategy to take. Um, it can also put you at risk of uh, like having Inquisition after you when you research something that suddenly gets prescribed after you researched it. And it's also a money drain. It costs to get that research going. But on the other hand, it can really give you a power increase in a multiplayer game. The multiplayer game, we gave you so many trade-offs. We had a producer friend we worked with, not on this game, on our, our Games Workshop title, who liked to talk about those juicy choices. Just being the, that trade-off between, do I use this person to lab, more resources, roads to increase my speed? I mean, that's just for the engineers. You had so many different choices you could take. All right, we got another artillery going. Let's build nothing there right now. Oh, got rejected by Lee Halan. Hey, Cycle Social Engineering, 840 Farbers. Um, probably a bad trade, but this is a good way to start making friends earlier. So let's make a friend of uh, Lucinda. Maybe I should start offering Cycle Social to everybody. All right, Demole, let's go see what's going on with those lovely, friendly Dakotas. Let's see if they want some. Not. Combat, if they want some psychosocial engineering. Let's trade psychosocial to everyone before they come after you. She doesn't need any psychosocial, does she? She's a Leolan. Oh, well, they can use meditation or alien psychology. Let's we'll see about the Dakotas. If me. Uh, we know we're going to want to invade the Dakotas at some point. They're so close. We can say, lines with you. I'll give you... Oh, they don't need my technology either. Ah, well. That's right, I made them beginners, so they probably all took a lot of technology at the beginning of the game. So, when you make them beginners, they get extra house traits in the game, so a lot of them have technology and other advantages that I won't have. Alright. Let's take a look at Kish. Let's go to Rampart, shall we? That. League. Radical planet. On to Estacar with reinforcements! I should just drop them at A-Lock and start the Alright, let's see what's going on in this little mine. Okay, it's still the four units. Put all these two together. Maybe not the infantry. Oh man, if we attack with these, we're definitely killing the noble. Alright, we're gonna get risky. Let's see what happens when we just do an armored assault. Hey, Jason, you said that's an awesome portrait. I should have asked which portrait it was. You know which one you're thinking of. Oh, yeah, that one's cool. Is it the Noble? Let me know which portrait you saw that you thought was cool. We had some good art in this game. Man, I'm amazed because there are very few pixels they're really drawing with to make these. Artist Bryce, John, the rest of the team. LeBlanc, they all did excellent work. All right, let's just do, let's just go in with the armor and see if we can capture the noble. Maybe we should just go in with the uh, other guys, actually, so that we have the armor to exploit with. All right, let's do that. So normal attack. Ah! Lost the infantry, the noble died. What a waste of time. Mikado's ruler. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, Celestra looks so... Yeah, it's really funny now with um, the Handmaid's Tale and Light, just how ominous this look is. I always felt we did a great job making the House of Zot look very warrior-like, ready to get into a fight any moment. Yeah, that's a nice guy you want to meet at a at any party. Very noble there, Alexius. All right. 
we took the mine, but we did not get the noble. We wasted a turn putzing around outside of it. Hey, another farm. Oh, there's nothing there. Now let's go ahead and just take that farm right off the bat. All right. Really am worried there's some rebel force floating around here that I missed out on. But hey, we should be pretty good and uh, start taking these troops to other planets. Go and assault really quickly. Whoa! Hey, one of my people has retreated. That means that they can't move into the city, and I'm gonna have the bull caller come in to carry them away. Ah, and none of these folks can reach it either. Well, that's a pain. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Let's get some other stuff building. Let's go ahead and build a militia unit here. What do I do with all these troops? All right, let's skip them from now and think. Same with my armor over there. Let's get these folks moving and see what we discover. All right, should be a farm up here. Ooh, yeah, some tough units here. I'm glad I saved my... Uh, Cruiser to shoot at that to bombard them. All right, let's throw bricks down from space. Now, they can't kill infantry. All the infantry is nicely protected in their bunkers when the bombardment begins. But at least we can take out the anti tank gun. I hope that artillery. I did not get the artillery. That's really what I'm Well, we could bring in these units to support the attack. Might not be a bad idea. So otherwise, it's just infantry versus a kind of tough little uh, position. So yeah, let's do that. I was going to take these uh, folks up to start dealing with the um, ruin that we know we're going to find. But let's go ahead and grab this farm just to be safe. Those can't attack, so let's get the rest going. I'm actually going to faint. Ah, fainting, fainting. Uh, try and have less damage. But certainly, you've got enough troops to take this. Duh! Losing stuff already. Hey, hey, but we can take an R. Oh! Yes! We can indeed take that artillery. Alright, Ossifer. Go into the farm and grab that artillery. We'll also go ahead and build a militia. Oh, we got tons of militia. The artillery is not going to do me any good up there. Uh, let's build one. Let's go ahead and sink one of these militia into there. Oh, no. Him in there for now to heal. You heal better in the city, in case you didn't know that. Jason asks, rules question. If there's a metal or trace icon that you don't see, can a mine still harvest it? Uh, Xenontrinium says, yes, if it's within range. Zeno is correct. Thanks for joining us, Zeno. Appreciate you giving that answer as well. Yeah, if you've got all of the hexes within two of a city give resources of some type. Um, they might not give what that city creates, but this farm is getting stuff from all those clears, all those waters. It's just that the fertile hex gives a whole lot more. If I built a mine around a bunch of hills and mountains that had no ore or trace symbols, I'd still get some ore out of it. Uh, Trace is the weird one. I think we mainly have it come out of sands, uh, barren areas. And that's definitely the case with oil as well. Right, do we want to start moving these troops? Yes. One, two, three, four. Wait, wait, wait. We might be able to take that city this turn. Ooh, we're being fancy. Load them up on the spaceships. Get moving, everybody. Hey, we've got some experienced infantry now to... Let die in crazy battles. All right. Shoot them up into space. Drop them right back down. And right here. What we got? Ah. Ah, that's probably too much for these guys. Oh, that was a mistake. Let's unload them in case we get attacked so we're not on the ships if we get attacked. He's got two artillery. Yeah, I think we made a mistake with that one. 
or not. Let's keep going. I might come back to that. I might have an angle. How to take that. Go ahead and send you that metal. Oh yeah, we've got a uh, self-propelled artillery here too. Let's wait on for a second. These troops. These troops. Heading up towards that ruin we know is going to be up there. Exploring. Maybe we can sell more to the Val. All right. Where did we have... Yes, we've got all those troops there. All right, so we're going to get a little funky. We've got three armored units. Still have one movement left. So go into there. Go into space. Let's bring our bulk hauler down onto that farm. Load these three armored units in. Shoot that bulk collar back into space and crash land it on the planet. D kids, don't try this at home. All right, so that bulk collar, oh, I didn't take much damage. I can live with that. They, everyone still has one move to go take that mine. So, unload all. Get everyone together. That's a good force. Uh, Zeno asked, would it be would it befit specific houses to excel in certain areas? I'm creating a mega mod for EFS and w wanting to diversify the houses gameplay-wise. Yeah, and if you look at what we give them as their base characteristics on that um, house chart when you set up a game, that kind of defines how they go. And we've defined them in some of the books militarily as well. Uh, the second edition Legions of the Empire book is a good example of how their different forces worked. So uh, for the Hazad, obviously more militaristic. They're going to have more combat things. The Kados, more focus on spying and uh, subterfuge and special weapons. Uh, House Hawkwood, all about that uh, diplomacy and no acting like nobles. Lee Halan making their deals with the church. Al Malik making their deals with the guild. But if you want to look in the Legions of the Empire book, we had a lot of fun talking about kind of how we saw their military. So early on in the Emperor Wars, everyone was just throwing whatever they have into the fray, and it's a huge mix of weapons. But as the war continued, their specializations showed. So for instance, House Dekados had large forces of cheap units, like uh, these infantry militias. They would just throw into battle. But then they had these elite special forces in there as well. And those militia would die in droves, but the special forces would ensure that there was a uh, Strong victory. They also love their plague uh, artillery, so have fun with uh, with the plague artillery and and them. Uh, Zeno, I don't know if you're at the beginning of the game because I was kind of talking about the tech choices they would make moving forward through the game. Uh, so it's fun to have. Let's go ahead and click on my labs and talk about some of this. Um, it's kind of fun to have. House Hawkwood and the Hazat focus on the physics because that gives you the traditional weaponry. Uh, Al Malik, Lee Halan, uh, and Dakados might focus more on psychosocial, the uh, Dakados more on microbiology and psychosocial. So it's fun if you want to define which techs they're going to follow as AI to go ahead and go that way. You can also, and this is something we debated doing but didn't do, you can give. Spe the units to the houses at cheaper costs or cheaper resources to create. So things like assassins, the Dakados make more quickly. The Blade Master is a, uh, great for the Al Malik or, uh, or the Hazat. Uh, armor and air forces we like to consider really good for the Hawk with the, um, the, uh, and the Hazat actually had the dervishes. So that's a funny one. We, uh, you might think of those as the religious ones. We gave those to the Hazat. The um, Theurgists would be more the Lee Halan path, for instance. The Theurgists are powerful in this game. Love when you get them. So you can make those cheaper as well. We didn't go that way. We want to give everyone equal chances to get those and not really weight it as much. The way we'd seen it let players define things more um, their own. One thing we didn't do, and 
we talked about doing this early on never did was to create saved games with the various houses having gotten a lot of technology but going along their preferred path so suddenly the Dakados have those assassins and plague bombs and the uh, hawk would have really great spaceships and armor and the zot have their blade masters and dervishes and just letting you go at it with powerful units right off the bat but we never really did that so instead we have that for late game play but if you want to start games like that where these houses have units that are more appropriate to their types that that'd be a really fun mod to jump right into the nastiness with is that kind of what you were uh, going after Zeno wow 920 time is high all right who was I on Okay. Oh, yeah, we were taking this mine. That mine will be mine. <laughs> All right, let's just do a normal attack. Their artillery will be problematic. But hey, not too bad. We do love our mines. Let's go ahead and build them a militia. No, let's build an artillery for these uh, spaceships to take with them next turn. All right. So let's see. Uh, hmm. I want to do some exploring down here because we know we got to have some good places down there to build things. So let's put these two infantry in here to heal. And let's start moving these militia somewhere. I guess down to this mine and we'll move on from it. All right. So we've got no spaceships. We want to get all these folks in the city so that they can start uh, being loaded onto spaceships to go elsewhere. We still got one city up there, probably a oil refinery, energy making location. Yeah, energy is defined very broadly. Oh, we got that's the same. Right? Yeah, that's the same. So we've got this one up here to take still. All right. So. Let's get this artillery heading up to join these troops. Let's put everybody in the farm over here. And, uh, put this good farmland down there. Put them all on the farm for future spaceships to take. All right. Let's not end our turn yet. Let's build something. Ooh, no. We're almost out of metal. But hey, we've got some money. Let's go buy from our buddies in the league. I took that thing. I should have took the friendship of the league. I might have put it to use. Uh, that doesn't seem too cheap. Right. Let's go ahead and uh, buy all their metals. See what happens when they restock it. Yeah, maybe we'll have to take a loan. Ah, that's right. You can take a loan from the league. And I think you got it cheaper if you had a friend in the league. Hey, where did our... We just buy the metal. Where'd it go? On the palace? Oh, the floor. Okay. All right. Now we can enter. All right. We are at about... Yeah, we've been going about a half hour long than I planned to, uh, to stream tonight. So, you know, I'm glad that was the info you were looking for. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll go ahead and do this as a regular thing. Uh, I know I can't do it. What night is, for those of you who tuned in for the stream tonight, is Saturday the best? Are there other nights which are generally better for you? Let me know. Uh, and to be honest, I wouldn't mind streaming this during the day. Take an hour break from work to just to stream games. It's not a bad idea. What times, what days, etc. are best for you? Let me know in the chat while I go ahead and save this off. Research of meditation has been completed. Yep, time for some. Pranabindu. So yeah, we build those militias to spot. So we're not gonna build anything else in those once we've done that. Hey hey, we got some friendship going on with the Dakados. I forget what I offered them. That's something we should have done. Was to put what the agreement was in this text. I'm sorry we didn't. Alright, Saturday is best for Jason. Dude man says any day. Zeno says any day. Uh what about 
But I'm talking Eastern time. Evening or afternoon is better for you? What do you think? All right, let's go ahead and save this. But I got a bunch of old saves in there. Uh, let's save as stream games. Stream games. Oh, I overwrote something. I guess I'll find my save later. Central time. time as this one began. All right, so Saturday evening. All right, we'll start thinking about that then. I'm not, I know I can't do that for a couple weeks, but uh, in the near future. Next, uh, next weekend, I have a birthday party for uh, what we call her the princess because uh, I, I like to think that uh, Alexius's daughter is based on her. For those of you who are playing uh, the current edition of Fading Suns, yes, Alexius now has an heir, a daughter. So I will have, uh, I'll be involved the next two Saturdays, but hopefully after that, that'd be a lot of fun. So maybe I'll sneak in some game time and then I'll just post those games. Man, now I really want to keep going. All right, all right. I'm going to hold off on it and uh, we will see. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for having joined uh, me tonight. That was always a lot of fun to play this. A lot of good questions, a lot of good chat and uh, looking forward to getting more modders involved in this. So, with that, I will bid you all adieu. I will post in this. Oh, uh, please like uh, and subscribe. This channel has a lot of good videos on game development of all types, so I'd love for you to dig into it. Uh, Unity, Unreal, other engines, uh, all kinds of good stuff. And if you like this video, it helps it show up in other people's algorithms. So thanks to all of you for joining. Today is when I learned the FS Dash on God, yes! I uh, yeah, it is a lot more convenient to use the God version. I have to admit, that is what I am playing now as well. So, yeah, that does make life easier. All right, so you're going to get a look at my desktop, because I'm doing screen capture in order to get the game streaming. So, with that, thank you all for joining me, and I look forward to the next one of this. Everyone have a great evening.